music sounded so good like this. <laughs> Fabulous. Time to show it's your time. You're nominated as the greatest, and your flow. Good day, and welcome to the Washington Report with Congresswoman Stacy Plaskett. I'm Stacy Plaskett, and I'm blessed to serve as the Virgin Islands delegate to the U.S. House of Representatives. The Washington Report was created to inform Virgin Islanders on current federal issues that directly affect our community. The show's guests range from political leaders to community activists. This show is all about getting information to you. Therefore, I really encourage you to email your questions to me at askstacy at mail.house.gov to have them answered on future shows. Now, I get to introduce you to a member of my team. My guest today is Jeffrey Noel. He's the legislative director for my office here in Washington, D.C. As the legislative director, Jeff is responsible for things such as ensuring that the legislative staff is properly focused on the legislative goals. He works to formulate positions on legislative issues. He monitors legislative activity on the House floor, handles long and short term legislative planning and oversees the progression of bills, um, measures, amendments, which I'm involved with as they move from the committee to the floor. In other words, Jeff's the policy guy. He's the legislative guy. Today, we're going to talk about the recently passed American Rescue Plan and how it benefits the residents of the Virgin Islands. Thanks for being with me, Jeff. Not like you really had a choice, though, right, when your boss calls. <laughs> Always to good show. to be here with you, Congresswoman. <laughs> the passing of this legislation is one of great progress and promise for Virgin Islands families, communities, and small businesses. With tens of millions of Americans in affected, more than half a million lives lost, over 18 million Americans unemployed, and millions more hungry, food insecurity, housing insecurity, the people of the Virgin Islands can rest assured that help is on the way. Thanks to tireless work to enact this historic legislation. Jeff, welcome. I think we both agree that the American Rescue Plan will save lives and livelihoods in the United States and the Virgin Islands, right? Right. Can you tell us a few ways the Virgin Islanders will benefit from the plan? Well, I think the biggest way is that it provides a huge lump sum payment in federal fiscal aid to the Virgin Islands, which was just announced last week, $561.4 million directly in federal assistance to the Virgin Islands. And this has broad eligibility. It can be used to respond to the negative economic consequences of the pandemic, like aid our tourism industry. Mm -hmm. And it also can provide essential services uh, that have declined due to revenue shortfalls. That can be used to pay essential workers $13 an hour, for example. Mm -hmm. it, it also can be used to invest in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. Uh -huh. And it also can be used to assist public entities, such as public entities like our Port Authority that is involved in the transport of passengers or cargo, mm -hmm. special purpose units of local government, such as public utilities, or nonprofits that aid the homeless can be used for a lot of things. A lot of things. You talk about the homeless, so mental health facilities, mm -hmm. um, after school for young people, Absolutely. summer youth programs, etc. I know that additional money was also given to the Department of Education. Is that correct? Yes, $138 million just for the Department of Education. That's direct dollars going directly to the Virgin Islands Department of Education. What was that amount again? $138 million. Oh, see, Jeff knows the numbers. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> this also puts money directly into Virgin Islanders' pockets, right? Yes. Can you explain how that happens? Well, the first and most important part, I'd say, is the stimulus checks. $1,400 mm -hmm. per person and each dependent as well per family. And it also expands unemployment insurance. It extends the $300 add-on payment mm -hmm. through Labor Day, September 6th. It also extends an increase in SNAP benefits, 15% increase in monthly SNAP benefits. And it also maintains and expands 
the pandemic EBT program that is basically nutrition aid for families that have experienced food insecurity due to the lack of school meals for their children. Can you talk about any rental assistance or support for homeowners? How do, how is, what does that funding look like? So $18 million is provided to the Virgin Islands Housing Finance Agency for rental assistance to help renters pay rent payments but also utility bills. And then for homeowners, there's also another $8.5 million to the Virgin Islands Housing Finance Agency uh, to help homeowners with mortgage payments and also utility bills. Great. So we have a large number of Virgin Islanders that are homeowners, over 60%. So that's really great for them, those individuals who have FHA, yeah. federally backed mortgages. But also, we have a lot of people who rent. And they rent from landlords, from you know individual homeowners as well. So that rental assistance actually goes directly to um, those renters, so that they can pay those landlords, so that people are also getting in uh, money as well, right? Absolutely. That's fantastic. So can you talk a little bit about uh, when it comes to vaccines, how that will help the people of the Virgin Islands benefit, and what is in that for the in the American Rescue Plan? Well, $7.5 billion is given to the CDC to distribute among state and local governments mm -hmm. for community vaccination sites and also mo mobile vaccination centers. And that's in addition to the money that FEMA provides to reimburse local governments like the Virgin Islands mm -hmm. for COVID response related costs. And so the Virgin Islands has received over $3.5 million in vaccination related assistance from HHS, mm -hmm. which is the CDC, and also FEMA <coughs> mm -hmm. for those vaccination to promote uh, and also um, uh, track vaccinations. I mean, because we've got to get to herd immunity. Right. That's the only way we're going to be able to get back to normal. And we've really got to educate about vaccines. And mm -hmm. there's money for that as well, mm -hmm. uh, to educate the vaccine hesitant. So one of the things that um, has been very helpful to the government of the Virgin Islands and to people in the Virgin Islands but people are not really aware of or understand is the child tax credit and the earned income tax credit. Can you tell us a little bit about what the child tax credit and earned income tax credit is for families and what we were able to put into this bill that's gonna help the government of the Virgin Islands in terms of reimbursements? Well, the child tax credit is a refundable tax credit that basically is a tax credit for each kid. And what Up the to the age of 17 up to the age of 17 because I have act. some who are older than 17 who still act like kids in my house of course but for all I can't get children, any money for them <laughs> right for all children under 18 okay you have an expanded tax child tax credit in 2021 uh -huh. up to thirty six hundred dollars for a kid under six mm -hmm. three thousand dollars if the kids over six through 17 okay and the credit is now fully refundable in 2021 and what that means is even if you owe no taxes you'll still receive the full amount of the credit as a refund payment and mm -hmm. you don't have to have any earned income to mm -hmm. receive the full amount of the child tax credit so even if you don't work you can still receive the full amount and also the uh, credit is now advanceable for the second half of 2021 and what that means is after july 15th the virgin islands bureau of internal revenue will be making monthly payments or periodic payments up to half the amount of the credit so for the 3600 hundred dollar payment it'll be $1,800 in $300 monthly mm -hmm. payments. Mm -hmm. And for the lower amount for kids above six, the $3,000, it'll be $250 per month to add up to $1,500. And the rest is claimed when you file your taxes at the beginning of next year. Of next year. Now, that credit is up to people who make an income of a certain amount. Yes. So after, if you are in a much higher tax bracket, then you may not get this, this credit. For those above $75,000, that's when the high amount of $3,600 or right. $3,000, that's when it that begins to phase drops. down mm -hmm. to pre-ARPA levels of, the pre-ARPA level is $2,000. Meaning the pre-American recovery Correct. and American rescue, Re rescue plan yes. amount, date. Yes. Right? Um, Correct. But now, the thing that is really monumental for the Virgin Islands in this is that our team, you know, led by you, the legislative team, were able to put in the American Rescue Plan um, the ability for the Virgin Islands government to be reimbursed for this. So up until this year, um, the Virgin Islands government was paying this federal tax right. credit 
to families earned income tax credit and the child tax credit, and they weren't being reimbursed by the federal government for it, right? right. Um, but thanks to the work of my tremendous team, to you, they have you. We now have uh, full reimbursement for this permanently, permanently moving forward. And annually, what does that save the Virgin Islands government? More than $20 million every single year permanently. And this is something you did while you were impeaching the president, Congresswoman. This is outstanding <laughs> what well, you've done. you got to multitask. Yeah. you got to multitask. So that's really fantastic. Um, I just want to, the American Rescue Plan, you know, has so many provisions like that, that the Virgin Islands, for the Virgin Islands that our office fought, fought for. Are there any other provisions in there that you think people should be aware of? Yes, I, I really do want to highlight how much this $561 million it, lump sum payment is. Mm -hmm. It is really a historic opportunity for the Virgin Islands to really recover, not only from the pandemic, but from the negative economic consequences of the pandemic, which can include economic challenges that existed prior to the pandemic, but were made worse because of the pandemic. And you know that we were recovering, still are, from two very severe hurricanes mm -hmm. three and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. So it can be used for costs related to responding to any kind of negative economic challenge that was made worse because of the pandemic. And the last thing is, now the territories, including the Virgin Islands, will be eligible for the Child Care Entitlement to States program. And what that is is supplemental child care funding that subsidizes lowering the cost of child care for Virgin Islands families. For families. Mm -hmm. Um, because we know that so many families, that's a major expense in their home, and it determines whether, should I go back to work? Mm -hmm. Am I going to be making enough money to work? Or should I be just staying home with my children? Um, so that's been fantastic. I know that, you know, when we're talking about children, we talked about the lump sum, the, the amount of money that goes to the Virgin Islands Department of Education, but how does the plan help schools in the Virgin Islands reopen? Well, it can be used to uh, revamp ventilation systems mm -hmm. to help schools comply with CDC guidelines as we go back to in-classroom learning. Mm -hmm. And it can also be used to make up for lost learning time, such as summer class programs, summer school programs, also after school programs, and also extending the class day to make up for lost learning time. All of those uh, uses are eligible uses of those funds. And there's also a, a funding additionally for Head Start. So we can expand the amount of children mm -hmm. that are eligible to our Head Start. Of course, you know, what's really near and dear to me are our farmers mm -hmm. and small businesses. Um, can you say at all how the rescue plan supports small businesses and the farmers in the Virgin Islands? Well, for small businesses, you've got another $7.5 billion nationally for the payroll protection program out of SBA that helps small businesses that have been impacted by the pandemic uh, pay wages and pay utilities and uh, pay health insurance costs. Mm -hmm. And it also has uh, another $15 billion nationally for IDA loans, that's economic injury disaster loans. Mm -hmm. Those aren't forgivable like the payroll protection program, but they cer certainly help. And it also has a $28 billion fund for restaurants. So going back to the small business one, you know, this is the payroll protection program uh, that we had. This has been something that has been around since the CARES Act, right? Right. Um, and Virgin Islands small businesses have done a really good job uh, uh, applying for and being part of this. You know, this I think has been um, a great testament to the relationship that small businesses have with our local banks. Mm -hmm. Because they're in the community, so they're able to talk to these businesses, um, really getting information out at the very beginning. You know, Jeff, you were on some of the webinars we had, so small businesses could apply. Wayne Huddleston, who's with the Small Business uh, Administration in the Virgin Islands, has done a tremendous job of answering questions. I mean, we've had almost 2,000 small businesses that have been successful in applying for this program. And how much millions of dollars do you think that has equated to? I think it's been uh, at least 700,000 loans. Mm -hmm. So um, 
many millions. <laughs> the loans go up to ten million each. Right. I don't have the exact figures in front of me. Right. But I believe it's seven hundred thousand loans. Mm -hmm. that That's have been made amazing. For Islands, I know. So can you t explain to us what maybe some of these businesses might look like? Because you know people think, well, I have a business, but it's just me. Uh, I'm the only employee that I have. I don't know if this is the program for me because, you know, this is to pay my utilities and pay uh, for employees. What do you say to people like that? Well, the eligibility is much broader than the normal SBA 7A assistance program. Uh, sole proprietorships can get PPP loans. Now, even with the rescue plan, uh, mm -hmm. small nonprofits are mm -hmm. eligible and also newspapers are eligible. So really, the, the eligibility is very broad, and so we would con urge uh, small business owners to consult with their lender, right. their local bank that are still participating, as well as our local SBA, which is very responsive. Wayne Huddleston is very responsive. So when you say um, nonprofit, so like a church, if the church has employees, um, maybe a um, an individual, um, you know, who works in the front office, the pastor, et cetera. Those are people that you could then apply for the loan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the um, St. John um, uh, Foundation or the St. Croix Foundation nonprofits, uh, the Women's Coalition, all of those are organizations which could be receiving this, as well as taxi cab drivers, yep. right? Absolutely. So proprietors of a business, they're individuals as well who could receive this. Um, our farmers, what do our farmers get out of this? Well, something that's very important in the rescue plan is that there is loan forgiveness for minority farmers. Mm -hmm. And basically they have any, the D Department of Agriculture is directed to forgive all USDA direct assistance loans and USDA guaranteed loans. And in addition to that, a 20% of the forgiven debt is made as a payment on top of that. So this is really historic what's happening for minority farmers in the rescue plan. That's amazing. That's really great. And, you know, that's what you were working on in the American Rescue Plan, right? We have the American Jobs Plan that's going on right now. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what people are on Washington, what we're all talking about with the American Jobs Plan? I'm throwing you a curveball because I did not tell you no you were going to be discussing this. The Jobs Plan is essentially a historic investment in infrastructure and in our workforce. Mm -hmm. So we're talking surface transportation infrastructure, roads, surface transportation that can include water surface transportation, like our marine highway surface transportation. Also, uh, investment in energy systems, mm -hmm. uh, electric transmission systems, so energy infrastructure, investment in broadband infrastructure, and also investments in R&D and STEM and workforce development that is, is, is very much needed as we recover from this pandemic. So investments in all types of infrastructure, horizontal, vertical infrastructure, mm -hmm. connectivity infrastructure, it's all in the American Jobs Plan, and we're really excited about it. Right, because, you know, we're, we're looking at this as a 21st century infrastructure bill. So it can't just be the traditional trains um, and roads, highways, right? We're including, um, you know, discussions about electric vehicles in this. Broadband is prominently featured, but also creating job training programs so that individuals can meet the needs of a changing um, uh, changing needs in the 21st century global economy. Um, one of the other things that I think is really interesting is that the president is really focused on clean energy. Um, you know, now that we're back in the Pir Paris Accord, right, there is a focus now on climate change and clean energy. And how important is that to the people of the Virgin Islands? Well, very important because when you invest in renewables, and you invest in microgrids and smart grids, that increases the resiliency of our infrastructure and reduces its vulnerability when we have things like a hurricane mm -hmm. that comes through. Mm -hmm. And it also reduces our dependence on all of the energy that has to be brought in, um, such as like it is now. That's why when the energy bill came through the house, you had an amendment, so we have a new grant program at the Department of Energy for renewable energy systems and smart grids and microgrids in the territories. And we're still working on that, but that's something I'm very hopeful about as we go to the jobs plan. Thank you. Well, that's a little bit about what our office has been working on and what's available 
to Virgin Islanders in the American Rescue Plan. Um, we've been debating and having long discussions. We haven't even seen the bill yet, right? But we've been working with the governor's office, with the local legislature, about what are our priorities for the American Jobs Plan. The members of the territories, everyone, I want you to know, we get together regularly. Um, and we represent both Republican and Democratic members um, as members of the territories, talking about, okay, as a group, what are the four, six things that we can all agree on that we're gonna fight together for? And I think we've made some tremendous progress in that area. And interestingly, you know, it's bipartisan in our support for one another and recognizing that as island territories, we all have very, very similar needs. Well, I think it's safe to say that because of the efforts of our office and with the Congressional Democrats' decisive action, the American Rescue Plan will make a real difference to protect the lives and livelihoods of Virgin Islands families, small businesses, farmers, all Americans. Jeff, I wanna thank you, not just for participating in this week's show, but all of the tremendous effort of you and the legislative team working under um, the chief of staff to make sure that all of this takes place. The information that we talked about, I'm sure will be appreciated by Virgin Islanders. Uh, want people to know that the slides that we were going through, we're gonna post them on social media. We're gonna be, make them available to you all um, so that you can see. You can go to our um, website, which is Plaskett, Dot house dot gov. You can see them there. You can go on social media to Facebook, or as my dad says, the Facebook, and you can see under Con Congresswoman <laughs> Stacy Plaskett, you'll see those slides there as well. Instagram, Twitter, all of that. We're on all of it. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you so much. Finally, this year, we will continue the tradition of ending the Washington Report with some words from me, from words from Stacy. Last week, Congress held a historic first ever congressional hearing focused exclusively on the insular cases, a series of Supreme Court cases grounded in racial discrimination that established a doctrine of separate and unequal for residents of US territories. The insular cases go well beyond the ability of citizens in the territories to vote. We pay billions of dollars in federal taxes, and yet residents of U.S. territories have denied access to critical federal programs and support. Otherwise eligible citizens in territories are denied Supplemental Security Income, SSI, leaving our most vulnerable seniors and disabled people to fend for themselves. Federal programs, including Medicaid, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, the Child Tax Credit, Earned Income Tax Credit, EITC, are either capped or denied altogether. This discrimination against residents of the territories must end now. These last vestiges of blatant racism in governance and interpretation of law used today to validate the unequal treatment of Americans and territories are staring us in the face, daring us to bring them down. The question of our time is, Will we blink? Again, if you have any questions you'd like to ask, please email them to askstacy at mail.house.gov. We want to hear from you. Our offices are open on St. Croix, St. Thomas, St. John. We have office hours there as well. And of course, Jeff is here in the DC office to support you as well. You can give us a call at 340-778-5900. You can call us at 202-225-1790. Visit us on Facebook. There's ways that you can email us um, on our website on Facebook and we'll get back with you. And we just wanna wish that you all stay VI strong and have a great day. Take care and God bless.